Hello everyone, today we'll talk about the video game Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, developed by Alcat Games and released December 7th, 2023. Alcat Games has been making a big name for themselves since their release of the Pathfinder Kingmaker RPG. While not perfect, that game had a huge success among the classic RPG fans, and shortly after they released the sequel, Wrath of the Righteous in 2021, a game that they still support to this day with new content. I've loved both of these games and I very distinctly remember back in 2018 casually telling my friends that it would be so awesome to see them tackle the Warhammer 40k IP since no one has really made a CRPG with it yet. So imagine my surprise when after a few years later they come out with Rogue Trader, it was like a dream come true for me. What else could I ask for? Well, I did ask for a 40k game from Latin Studios as well, so if I'm right and they do it, you can paint me. But let's talk about Rogue Trader. The game is set on the Warhammer 40k universe, where everything sucks. You go shopping, there's probably this guy looking at you and asking why you are consuming so much resources than the quota and probably shoots you. You marry your woman and it's probably not a woman, it's this thing and now you'll have children that look like this. One day you're working your 18 hour shift at a factory the other day you are being sent off to a war front to fight the worst looking bugs you can ever find. I think you get the gist. It's a parody of an empire too big to succeed, where suffering is the default setting. But not for you, because you are a rogue trader. If you are a rogue trader, the emperor of mankind officially gives you a license to do whatever the fuck you want. You get a sweet ass ship that carries a giant letter signed from the Emperor that basically says this He is my bitch. Don't mess with my bitch, alright? So you are sent off into the stars to further the interests of the Imperium. This can mean colonizing new planets, broker deals with planets that were previously under the control of the Imperium, explore the stars in search of technologies long forgotten, and occasionally get a little of a something something with the Xenos on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so the Imperium is ultra xenophobic, so anything that doesn't resemble a human is pretty much on a kill list. Are we the baddies? Nah, but it's okay if you want to mess with the Xenos and the non-human. You are the Emperor's homie. So, no one will pipe up if you suddenly decide to become friends with her. <laughs> mm. The game plays very much like many other CRPGs. You have your crew of companions exploring maps, discovering secrets and engaging in combat with the enemies of mankind. It's turn based so you have plenty of time to prepare your place and there are different archetypes that you can use to adjust the builds of your companion. And this is my first issue with the game. Alcat decided to make their own system for the characteristics of the character, their classes and abilities, but while the systems for Pathfinder felt really polished because they based them on the actual tabletop game, with Rogue Trader we have a bit of a needlessly complex system. Now, hold your horses, I'm not saying that complexity is bad, I love the kinds of games that give me the opportunity to do theory crafting and find ways to customize my character a lot. The issue is that each time that you level up on Rogue Trader feels like you're doing Homer. It's like having this guy with a gun to your head and say, read the 50 abilities 10 times until you understand them, got it? Good. And when you do, read them 50 more times, got it? Good. Then tell me the square root of these nuts multiplied by that, I don't give a fuck. Please select something and move on, you asshole. Because that's what will happen to you. Each level up will feel like a chore because it's so convoluted to read descriptions and understand how the abilities play with each other. I'm all up for creating a system that you can explore to your advantage, but while on Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous you had a much clearer system that defined your character by keywords and felt more familiar with the concepts of medieval fantasy, in Rogue Trader you have none of that. The archetype concepts are too vague initially for you to understand what their capabilities are in the long term planning of your character. If I go to Pathfinder and I want to play a mounted warrior, I pretty much just need to focus on things that will give me either more bonuses to my fighting style or my mount. And it's pretty straightforward to conceptualize a warrior that goes to battle in his teeth. 
While on Rogue Trader, if I say I want to play a guy that shoots two pistols, you need to do homework to understand if you want your guy to shoot two pistols as an assassin, a bounty hunter, arch militant, or a psycho rich guy that will explode your nuts with the power of his mind. It's not immediately clear what it is and what synergies do what. Since the game system is unfamiliar, it will be a very hard journey until you have a well-defined idea of what you actually want to build into. Thankfully, the game does allow you to respect your characters very easily. Towards the end of the game, you'll actually find that you can easily break the system to the point your characters get so OP, so absolutely disgusting, so filthy powerful, that one just one. Let's say her. Yes, she will run the entire combat map in the single turn before even your enemies know she is there and burn them all down for the glory of the Emperor. God, it never felt so good to be a fucking terrorist. But what are you doing when you are not exploring maps? Well. There's plenty to do actually. You can talk with your companions to learn more about them, where they come from and their place in the world. If you don't know anything about Warhammer 40k, I think this game actually makes a decent effort to never let you feel lost, at least at first. More on that later. If talking is not your thing, you can explore the Coronos Expanse, your own corner of space, where you'll be able to control your ship to explore planets, find secrets, and in general just progress through the game until you reach your current quest objective. While you are exploring, there are many events that can happen, such as filthy chaos enemies appearing on your ship to try and stop your progress, story events where you can choose your action, as if it were a choose your own adventure style book, and there will be times where you can land your ship and load into a map to explore on the ground. If you know all cut games, you also know that they like to play around with adding game mechanics that are not typically associated with classic RPGs. The first Pathfinder game had a kingdom management system. The second one added to that a crusade army management thingy. Rogue Trader has colony management that is just as bare bones as the previous Pathfinder games, but also adds space battles. By far they are one of the best additions that Alcat could have made for the game. While on Pathfinder games I found the extra systems just tacked on without any real connection to the meat of the game, in Rogue Trader it makes perfect sense to have this system. Since you control your own ship in this little corner of space, it makes perfect sense that you can use it to fight your enemies. And the combat system here is actually pretty interesting. It's nothing too complex, but it's a nice enough break between the other elements of the game. You can staff positions on your ship with your companions to receive bonus and abilities, equip different weapons and items on your ship, and even upgrade it with different abilities that you can use while in combat. It also helps that these are mostly optional, with the exception of a few battles. But even the ones that aren't optional, don't bog the game down by occupying too much of your time. For a lot of fans of this type of RPG, one of the most important things is how good the story is, and how much freedom you can have to make your own choices and see the consequences. So let's talk a little bit about story. As a rogue trader, your primary objective will be to reconnect with the colonies that are part of your domain that you've lost communication with. And that's largely what you'll be doing in the first two chapters of the game. You'll go to each of the planets, resolve their issues by choosing the best way to handle them and get your personal empire back in order. While you're at it, your companions will also have their own requests for you that allow you to learn more about who they are but also give you a better context of the world of 40k. The writing of the quests and dialogue shows a personal care for the Warhammer 40k universe that isn't always achieved by the game developers that try their hand at it. But on this, Outcat Games has surpassed any and all expectations that I had. Whether you are an hardcore fan of Warhammer or just someone starting out, I think they did a great job of easing you into the aspects that make this world so unique, while also bringing up some substantial lore into the forefront of the game. It was fascinating to me how easy it was for them to characterize the different components of this world that you can find, like the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Navis Nobili, the Psychers. It's very easy to plaster a space marine on the screen, tell a wartime tale and move on with the game. But to craft identity of the factions, the characters that represent them and make it all sensible to newcomers and veterans, that's craftsmanship. 
They understood the assignment so well and treated Warhammer 40k for what it is, a parody of humanity. No punches were pulled when you could be evil, no deviating from complicated choices, and the choices provided can lead you to some pretty interesting paths in the game. I said before it's good to be evil in this game, and that's because when you do, it's not the cartoony evil choice, it's the pragmatic evil. And there's no good guys in Warhammer 40k, no matter what everyone says. Everyone is a piece of shit that would be better left alone, rotting in the surface of a dying star. But here we are, we have an opportunity of being benevolent, being evil, with the end goal of building the story of your own Rogue Trader. These stories go hand in hand with a great atmosphere that is constantly getting you hyped up for the next moment in the game, and that is complemented so well by the banger soundtrack of the game, it feels epic, it fills your heart with desire to serve him, to be the best you can be, for the glorious, the ascended. Ray through the pipe organ, boy. Being serious though, I can't overstate the hype that I get listening to this soundtrack. Every composer not only brought their best, they blend so well with the game. If you looked carefully at the gameplay throughout the video, you'll see there is a bit of a more cartoony vibe to the aesthetic of the game, which contrasts with Warhammer 40k as we know it. And it's something that worried me at first, because I generally prefer the more crushed colors, but don't let it fool you. This game has some gruesome things to show you and when you see them, you can always feel the freaking music bite at your soul like the Empyrean demons plucking at your heartstrings. Alas, it is not all roses. Once you finish chapter 3 of the game, you have two more chapters to go. And that's where you'll get the Hellcat Games Junk Special. So let's look at the menu, shall we? 1. Quests bugged to the point of being impossible to complete. 2. Story beats that are quickly wrapped up without much context or reaction from the main participants of the story. 3. More bugs, including character builds that just go so wrong that you don't even know what is happening. 4. Encounter balancing thrown out the window. In one moment, you are one-shotting an elite enemy like he's a chaos chicken spawn. The other moment, you have a god-empowered run-of-the-mill cultist guy that, literally, you learned to fire a gun yesterday and you will spray bullets with a 100% critical chance to send all your characters to the Shadow Realm. 5. The game updates locations with new content and makes no attempt at showing you where it is, so you'll miss it if you don't just visit every single place again. It's a mess, but it's a mess that I love to play. But it's a mess! At this point, Alcat should be releasing their games in early access, for a period of time so that they can get the rest of the budget to complete the vision that they had for the game, while squashing all the critical bugs. It's not acceptable that players are the beta testers for the complete release. And the funny thing is that I played this game on alpha and beta and it was pretty solid for the chapters that were available. It's always that last third of their games that is completely subpar in relation to the rest of the game. You can say the same about Baldur's Gate 3, sure, but it felt finished, even buggy as it was. And it's so disappointing to me. I'm such a fan of Warhammer 40k and I waited for this game to be the one game that I could point to and say, this, this is what I want for my favorite franchise. These people get how it should be done. And they did, for three chapters. I felt that I just wanted the game to end after a while on chapter 4, because I knew it couldn't possibly come back from this. I beat the game with 84 hours and while it's far from completing everything, I felt like I had enough of a game that I was hoping to be the perfect game for me. The game showed me how good it could be in the first 50 hours, but it pisses me off that they couldn't just deliver less hours with more quality. I don't need my RPG games to have hundreds of hours if they are not going to be able to provide a sustainable quality. If there is a lesson that I wish for Alcat games to learn is this. It's okay to scale your game back. You have what it takes to create a perfect RPG if you don't overdo it on the amount of content and scope you want to have. But I know that this is probably not the Alcat way. 
They've done it three times already, and I don't think that they'll learn from the lesson in this game and apply it to the next one, so... For you, the fan of the RPG games, I'll say this. If you're a hardcore fan of Warhammer 40k, play it when you can. You're going to have so much fun. But if you are on the fence, maybe you're not sure if this is for you. Just wait a few more months. Hullcat is working to improve the game at an impressive rate and they are going to release DLC this year still. So it's really up to you if you want the complete experience later on or a good experience with a mediocre finish right now. I love this game to death. Faults be damned. And I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I kind of feel I'm contributing to the problem of unfinished games getting released. And I'll play it again too, especially with the DLC. Even with the issues I have with the combat system, this game never actually stopped being fun to play. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much all I want. You know my bias from the start of this video. I summoned demons to ask this game to be made for me. So my soul is forfeit and I got what I wanted. Will you eat the call of the Imperium? Or will you get a sweet SGF and be the best theoretical bastard you can be? It's up to you. Thank you all so much for watching everyone. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. It helps me out so much and it's just a click of a button. Thank you all again. Have a lovely day and bye bye.